part of what you have to wrestle with in uh, looking at these three different modes is where is the power, right? Mm -hmm. What is the, clearly in the first, in, in download, the audience has, there's not even an illusion that they have power or influence. Mm -hmm. And the second one, the implication is that they have some level of that because their input, if you wouldn't ask for it if it didn't matter conceivably. And the third one, you're, you know, they're, it's a collaborative process, right? You can think of it, there's another spectrum that I, f I find um, the supplements this, which is the spectrum between um, consumers, right? You're, the, the people in the audience are the consumers of this experience. Are the people my customers? Consumers are just people you have an account with right now. Customers are people that you have an account with right now as a part of a longer relationship. Are they your counselors? Are there people who are giving you advice that you're going to take seriously about what you should be doing, maybe even in regards to serving them? Or are they your collaborators, mm -hmm. right? Are they people that you're co-creating with? This is sort of related to the, the different modes, but it's also a little different because you could have dialogues to uh, among counselors. But, but, but my point is, is that the power relationships are, underlie this, and part of what I think we need to move forward on is greater clarity both within and interpersonally about what is the situation that we have here. And that's gonna, that's gonna make people feel sometimes uncomfortable because you have to expose the fact that, well, I'm gonna let y'all have some influence over this, but I'm not letting you have influence over that. And if you try to make me bring that up, I might not do that. And, and, and part of better meeting design and better transparency and more elicitive techniques resurfaces is these power relationships. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, I think that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I see the connection of being clear with yourself about who are you, what's your role, what are you trying to get out of it? And also for self-critique after, after a meeting, using this as a lens of was I, if I had intended to have crosstalk and dialogue, was I effective and to own some responsibility um, if that was something that maybe you set up the room in such a way. And so I think about this idea of um, participatory voices at the table and saying, hey, we have to get all these folks to the table. And I started to wonder if the table is really a good metaphor because um, mm. suggesting that there is a table suggests that there is a physical, you know, that metaphor has a physical aspect of it. If, if you don't show up, you're, you know, you're not there. Some, I've heard it say that if you're uh, not at the table, you might be on the menu. <laughs> All right, 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 that's cute. And so it's cute, and then it also sort of is like, oh, wait a minute, that, you know, that talks about if people showing up at the same time. Being able to show up uh, may be a luxury that you had time away from your kids, your job, your work hours align with that. Um, and so just thinking about uh, some of the work that you've done to ex sort of talk about how to um, extend participation, thinking about what's the pre-work you, that you're doing. Is it multiple meetings? Is it different formats and forums for, for seeking input? I'm curious about sort of that, if that, you know, uh, what you think about that table metaphor and is there a, a better one? Right. Um, I'm not sure what's a better metaphor. I think that I think that what you're raising is a really important point. I spend so much of my energy just trying to have people think about meetings and making them clear, meeting, making them more, higher quality, more participatory, more elicitive. But I think that um, it's important that we go past that. As you point out, meetings are not something everybody can do. People can care about issues as much as uh, to, for the life of them, and they they still got two kids. Raise or, or and some grandkids, and they ha they cannot spend three hours at your meeting, no, how, no matter how well it's done. Sure. So, if we want to think more broadly about getting different perspectives, so we can do the kind of collective problem solving that's possible that I was speaking about earlier, we have to think about what are dialogic strategies in meetings, but we have to think about what are strategies of input and perspective that are go beyond the meeting, because everybody can't make the meeting. Now. That raises, so I'm not sure, I don't, I don't have a better metaphor than the table, but I do think that we have to think that through, and then as, as we, as um, participatory strategies, polling as an example, become more widespread, we, the new questions get raised about what's the purpose of meeting? What is the, you know, what is the, what happens in, um, when people are sitting down together, looking face to face at each other, they try to wrestle with their experiences, their perspectives, and what we might do. And is there something special about being in the same place as other people that can't happen through a computer screen, and that certainly can't happen through online chat, right? I, uh, I think that <clears throat> the dialogaholics like myself would tell you that 
there's something about being in the same physical space that affects us at a deeper level than it does when we're in an online chat room or we're just typing in our survey responses. So given, you know, with the, with the increasing pervasive of, of broadband internet and the availability of participating in processes without being there, we, we will have to revisit the question of what do we reserve the meeting for? What, what, what is the, it might, it might be that we move towards meetings or when you're doing crosstalk, because when you're doing the other, when you're doing downloaded feedback, you just as well, people can stay home and do it just as well from their hologram screen into the, into the, uh, uh, into the process. So, like I said, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that I think that questioning the table metaphor is a, is a good idea. I'm not sure I have a better one, but I do know that if we're going to take dialogue seriously and complex problem solving seriously, we can't just think about what happens in the meeting, um, because there will still be there will be people who we exclude. And ultimately, if the goal is more participatory processes, so we can come up with better solutions because we have better input, then we have to think about the fact that there are impediments to that participation.